I think what it comes down to these days is all these camera manufacturers are kind of like film stocks. Has their own like individual strong suit and their own unique look, but they'll all get the job done for you. With that said though, the Canon is my portrait and uh, it just fits my vision perfectly. <laughs> This is why you guys get assistance. You, know, you just stand around and just watch them do all the hard work. Oh, my finger! I haven't had water today. Canon R5 review. I've had this for two or three months now, I think. I've done a handful of gigs on it now. I've done maybe like a dozen shoots on it. I think it's safe to say I'm uh, comfortable, familiar with it now, and I have a lot of things to say about it. Uh, I'll just start off with, I love it. This is pretty much the camera I've been wishing for for like the past two or three years now. Let's just start off with ergonomics and the body. Uh, when mirrorless cameras first came out, I got on the Fuji because it just looked so cool and it was inspiring to use. It was really fun and it kind of made you creative, made you think a little bit differently. Those bodies didn't do well for me. They got pretty dinged up pretty easily because I'm kind of hard on my stuff. The Sony felt pretty brittle in the hand. They're like really light. I guess if you travel a lot, it'd be pretty cool to have it. But for me, I need something that's a little bit more robust that can like keep up with my workflow. This Canon R5, it kind of feels like an old DSLR, but modern. I know I just said old. It, it feels really tough and the grip on it's pretty big. And so when it's in your hand, you feel like you can fling it around and nothing's gonna happen to it. The whole layout makes a lot of sense. I'm not really fidgeting around like I was with the Sony, especially the menus. The menus are just packed of common sense. Coolest thing about it is there's a touch screen on it, so you can literally click through all your menus. Very intuitive. There's there's no like lollygagging around with it. Working with it on set, kind of transition to the next topic right now. We're on a commercial shoot, you usually have to tether. Uh, I like to do it wirelessly on my iPad, but literally like this whole past two or three years, that's when my career is really like kind of skyrocketed. I haven't had a tether once because we're usually shooting pretty fast, but the most recent campaign I just did, the client wanted me to tether. So we just set up the iPad and we did it through the, the Canon app. But I just remember when I had the Canon 6D, People were always really impressed just from the photos from the back of the camera. Uh, with the Fuji cameras, it was a similar story. With the Sony, the Sony really hurt my confidence on set. I would remember I would show the, the client like the back of the camera and they would never really say anything crazy. They'd be like, oh, okay, um, maybe we should try this, maybe we should do this. It's just the, the back of the camera, the colors weren't, they don't really wow anyone. So now with the R5, I'm getting those wow, oh my God, this is stunning, this is gorgeous, oh my God. I'm getting that again and to hear that on set it really helps your confidence it lets you know that you're going in the right direction it lets you know that the client's liking what you're doing so again when i had the sony and i wouldn't really get any of that some people might be like maybe i was shooting like shit with the sony uh, i've been shooting the same way that i have even with the canon and so i honestly don't think it was that it was just the Sony's, uh, part of it is the, the LCD on the Sony's not that great. You'll see the highlights blowing out on the LCD, but in the viewfinder, they look just fine. It was weird. So I would actually start having clients look to the viewfinder, which is kind of, they're not really used to doing that. It's again, usually tethering or the back of the, on the LCD. Uh, so with that said, the files, uh, the colors on the files are freaking stunning. At this point, literally all I do now is I add a slight like filmic curve and then I do a three-way color grade. So it's just shadows, midtones, and highlights. That's all I'm really doing on these Canon files now because the out of camera colors are just so stunning. I did a previous video on here. I was just interested in seeing what these files look like compared to film. And I was shooting Portra. Portra is my favorite film. I would say Kodak Portra is everyone's favorite film. It has accurate colors, but at the same time, it has this beautiful saturation and, and tonality to it at, at the same time. That's basically what I would say like this Canon R5's uh, files look like. And so now with the Canon, I'm pretty much getting out of color cameras and having to do minimal work and I'm beyond happy with it. It's pretty much everything that I've been envisioning. It's even to the point where when I had to send Sony files out for selects to clients, I would go through and I would actually just try to edit almost every freaking photo and try to get them kind of consistent. Now with the Canon, I pretty much just select all and I do the auto button and capture one. And then after that, I go through and I just scan through to make sure like the highlights and shadows are clean and the exposures are fine. And now when I'm sending those, clients are coming back with notes saying, oh my God, we love them. Can you possibly liquefy this? Could you remove that blemish here and there? And I have to remind them, these aren't edited yet. These are just for selects. These are just raw photos. I honestly think that goes a long way to show you that clients specifically my clients and the type of clients I want, 
Um, they tend to fall under my vision. That's the reason they hire me and that's the reason I, I try to reach out to them. We have similar visions and we have similar branding ideas and just similar things that we wanna execute together. So for them to approve those colors, it's a strong confirmation in this camera for me. I guess that will lead us into dynamic range. I remember my Sony, I could kind of expose at zero and I'd be able to uh, bring back the highlights like perfectly. And then the shadows would be kind of messy and mushy and there would be a lot of noise and it kind of fall apart. And so I would kind of push the exposure a little bit more on the Sony and the highlights were clip a little bit, but it was usually pretty safe. Well, when I first got the Canon, I was like, shit, like the dynamic range is horrible on this. But it's only because I was exposing at zero or a little bit above uh, zero. With this R5 and the R6, you need to underexpose. You need to expose for your highlights. I actually run my histogram on here because the histogram will show you when your highlights are peaking. Sometimes it's okay to peak it if the subject's really in like a dark shadow and the subject's the whole point of the photo, then that's fine. But what I've learned is there's situations where I'm totally saving the highlight and the foreground all is like all in shadow and it's almost black on the back of the LCD. I've learned that in post, you can lift those and it's gonna be clean and there's gonna be a lot of detail and color depth within those uh, shadows still. So you're not having to do a bunch of noise reduction and painting in extra colors and boosting saturations in different areas. I don't have to do that with this at all. It's just, it's the files are almost like milky uh, and they're, they're like velvety and milky and thick, you know? There's, there's, there's a lot to it there. Uh, the last thing, autofocus. I don't really think uh, autofocus should be like really like a huge topic anymore. Like with Sony and Canon and even some of the Nikon cameras and stuff, the autofocus is great. Uh, so at this point, we're literally just just picking hairs. Is that what they say, picking hairs? What do they say? Something like that. We're, we're being nitpicky, basically. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how it goes. For the third day on this campaign I'm still working on, uh, we were shooting mountain bikers in the mountains, so there's pine trees all around us. I was like getting kind of ticked off because I kept missing shots because the cannon would just like lose the subject and go off into the tree. So I was about to like have to go on manual focus, but then I remembered, let me go into the autofocus settings and go through the different modes. There's a mode on there. Let me let me just bring this up real quick. So there's a mode in here. Let's go to autofocus. Also, guys, the C70 is doing great on autofocusing right now. Um, so you see in autofocus and menu three, there's these different cases. And so I switched it to case three, then all of a sudden the autofocus was just sticking to them. It was almost like uh, robotic the way that it would, it would find the mountain biker and then just hold it. Uh, I learned my lesson there. If your autofocus isn't working on the R5 or R6 for you, um, go into those different modes and try those different modes out and it will totally change up what it's going to do for you. That's pretty much it. Sorry I didn't share a bunch of examples on here. I kind of put that fat intro in there just so people wouldn't complain about footage and stuff because uh, that's what people like to do. Everyone has an opinion. I understand that. This is just my opinion. Again, just wrap things up. I've tried all these cameras. The R5 is the one for me. I think what it comes down to these days is all these camera manufacturers are kind of like film stocks. Has their own like individual strong suit and their own unique look, but they'll all get the job done for you. With that said, though, the Canon is my portrait and uh, it just fits my vision perfectly. <laughs>